morning, Antioch Church Embrace. Thanks for allowing me to be a part of your devotions. Uh, the Word of God comes to us from Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 to 20. It says, When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, Let us set a king over us like the nations around us. Be sure to appoint over you the king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from among your fellow Israelites. Do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not an Israelite. The king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to get more of them. For the Lord has told you, you are not to go back that way again. He must not take many wives or his heart will be led astray. He must not accumulate large amounts of silver and gold. When he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law taken from what the Levitical, from that of the Levitical priest. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life, so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words of this law and these decrees, and not consider himself better than his fellow Israelites and turn from the law to the right or to the left. Then he and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. Amen. In this passage, um, Moses is foreseeing that the Israelites will at one point want to put a king over themselves. Um, and, you know, even exactly what it says, let us uh, set us a king over us like all the nations around us. And it really is a sad, tragic thing that happens with the Israelites because those are uh, virtually the exact words that are spoken to Samuel. Um, and what ends up happening is it's them basically saying, we want to be like everyone else. And in that way is a rejection of God being their king. Um, up to this point, it really is understood that God is king, right? And so that there's a term, theocracy, right? Where it's God who rules. Um, and then they want to be like everyone else, despite the fact that God had chosen them and really gave them a special privilege of, of being king over the Israelites. The Israelites wanted to be like everyone else. But even then, God says, okay, you know, you, you can have a king and I will appoint a king over you but you must not allow that king to be like all the other kings right, of this world. And so the king must not take many wives. He must not accumulate large amounts of silver and gold. Um, it's an interesting thing that God is saying, right? Because ultimately what he's saying is, even though you think that you are king, um, I am truly the king, right? Even though you think that you are the one in charge, I'm the one that's in charge, right? And all the other all the other kings of this world, they mark and measure their success by how much gold that they've accumulated, how many towns they've conquered, right? How many wives they've accumulated, right? And all of these things that were in their minds, the status, um, things that gave them status and things that gave them prestige. And here is God saying, that's not the way I function, right? I don't want you to have many wives. I don't want you to accumulate much gold or silver and ultimately he's saying i want you to just follow my law um right the treasure for the foreign kings would be wives and gold and silver but the treasure for the king of israel was to be the word of god right that's what it says right he is to take when he takes the throne of his kingdom he is to write for himself on a scroll a copy of this law taken from that of the Levitical priest. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words of this law and decrees. Right? It's an instruction to the kings of Israel of how they should rule with the word of God to be their standard and the word of God to give them wisdom so that they would know how to rule over Israel. And we know because you know, we have the, the books of 1st and 2nd Kings, 
First and Second Chronicles, where we come to see what exactly takes place after this law is given. And we see that these Israelites and the kings of Judah, you know, they fell short and they became like other kings. They sought to really glorify themselves and accumulate and acquire. And even though it says he is not to consider himself better than his fellow Israelites and not and to turn from the to the from the law to the right or to the left. Um, his reign and each of them, their reigns and the reigns of their children, they fell short because of the way that they ruled. But we do have a true king. Right? We have the true king in Jesus Christ who is the one that really ruled the way that the Lord God calls us to rule, right? The way that he called the kings of Israel, like, of Israel to rule with love in their hearts, obedience to the word, and the treasure to not be of this world. And that's, of course, that's our Lord Jesus. And he is, in a sense, calling us to also be set apart from the ways that everyone else in this world lives, the things that they treasure and what it is that we ought to treasure, right? The rest of the world will treasure beautiful women or handsome men, big homes and gold and silver and fast cars. Those are the treasures of this world. What is your treasure this morning? Because the word of God is calling us to treasure his word. And this time that we spend in devotion, time that we spend in his word is this a moment that you treasure is it truly something that you treasure is it something that you allow to really dictate and motivate and move your life in the direction that God is calling you to it really does give us an understanding of the attitude that we ought to have when we approach God in our devotions as well that we would really Come before the Lord with submission on our hearts, submission to his word, that we would treasure the time that we would spend with him and give glory to God for the ways that he leads us. And so this is my encouragement to you um, today as you spend this time and you begin to wrap up your time with the Lord. My encouragement is that you would really Give glory to God and thank God that he allows you to spend this time with him. And give glory to God that he allows you to open up the word of God and that it would speak into your heart and bring transformation. And treasure the time that you spend, that you would put into place with proper perspective the things of this world and the treasures of this world. And we would treasure the Lord. Remember that Jesus Christ is our true King. Well, thanks so much for allowing me to speak. I hope you have a wonderful day today. We pray for God's protection over you and your family. And um, please do remember to join us for worship tonight. Okay, well, thanks. Bye-bye.